Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to the video on the neutralisation reactions of period 3 oxides. So in this video we're going to look at the different oxides across period 3 and see how they react uh, as acids and bases as well. So we're going to split this up into three different sections. We're going to look at the reactions of the basic oxides, we're going to look at the reactions of the amphoteric oxides and we're also going to look at the reactions of acidic oxides. So we're going to start on the uh, left hand side of the board and these are basic oxides. These are ionic compounds so these are things like sodium oxide and magnesium oxide. Now these will uh, these are classed as basic oxides as they form hydroxides when we dissolve them in water. So we can see here we've got sodium oxide we're going to react that with for example sulfuric acid and we form a salt plus water. This is just a standard acid base reaction, so nothing really too complicated here. Just watch out, make sure your formulas are correct as well. They might not just ask about sulfuric acid, it could be hydrochloric as well. Now in the second example, which is magnesium oxide, I'm going to react this with hydrochloric acid. So magnesium oxide plus hydrochloric acid, which is 2HCl, will form magnesium chloride, there's your salt, plus water. So nice and straightforward, easy. Okay, so it gets a little bit complicated when we get to aluminium oxide, as this is actually classed as amphoteric. Now, amphoteric means that it will uh, act both as a base and an acid. Uh, and so I've, wrote, I've written two equations to show this happening. So aluminium oxide is Al2O3. I've started it act reacting as a base. So if we take aluminium oxide, react it with an acid, so for example, hydrochloric acid, we form the salt of aluminium chloride. If this was sulfuric acid, it would be aluminium sulfate. Um, so just watch out really carefully for those reactions, and you produce water. Not a problem. Okay, the next one is aluminium oxide reacting with a base. Now, this is where it does get a little bit difficult. You've got to know this. It's so, so important. It's quite popular for the examiners to put this in the exam. Aluminium oxide acts as an acid. It's reacting with a base, which is sodium hydroxide. Uh, and this time we've got water as well on the left hand side of the equation and we form a salt over there and this is sodium aluminium tetrahydroxide uh, quite a big salt but you notice there's no water produced in this reaction that's really really important make sure this is similar to uh, effectively like ammonia uh, reacting with uh, an acid when you form just one salt and you don't actually produce water this is a similar reaction to reactions of ammonia with an acid. Okay, and just finally looking at acidic oxides. Now, acidic oxides are things like uh, non-metals, so silicon dioxide, they form an acidic oxide. Um, so silicon dioxide uh, plus a base, because it's acid, and react with a base, and it will form a salt, in this case sodium silicate, Na2SiO3. Uh, and uh, reacts with water. Now this is very similar to uh, how you might produce um, uh, calcium silicate from a blast furnace and iron, except you would use calcium hydroxide instead of sodium. Okay, and the next one is phosphorus oxide or phosphorus pentoxide. So P4O10 can also be written as P2O5, that's why it's called phosphorus pentoxide. But uh, P4O10, anyway, um, this will react with 12 lots of sodium hydroxide, for example, and form sodium phosphate, which is your salt, plus water. So again, another standard acid-base reaction. Um, now, this is important again, just like over here. Phosphorus oxide uh, reacts with water and it will form a phosphoric acid. That's why we say the oxide is acidic, because when it reacts with water, it will form phosphoric acid. Uh, and obviously, that makes it acidic and reacts with the base to form your salt plus water. Okay, look at the last final two here. Now this is sulfur oxides, uh, and there's two types of sulfur oxide. We've got sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide, as you can see here. Now the sulfur dioxide can react with two lots of sodium hydroxide to form sodium sulfate, uh, sodium sulfite, uh, sulfite, yeah, Na2SO3 plus water. Now you can actually uh, break this up into two separate uh, equations as well, so you've got to watch out for that. So if I react sodium, uh, sorry, sulfur dioxide, and I react that with one mole of sodium hydroxide, what will form is sodium uh, with this sodium compound here, which is NaHSO3. Uh, and um, just make sure that you don't actually form any water on that one there as well. So just make sure you know what the examiners are asking. And the last one here, which is SO3, sulfur trioxide, 
This will react again with two lots of sodium hydroxide and form sodium sulfate, which is Na2SO4, plus water. Again, this can be split up if you use one lot of sodium hydroxide, it will form sodium hydrogen sulfate instead. So just make sure you read the question really carefully and you're paying attention as to whether you're using excess sodium hydroxide or not. Um, and if you're not using excess sodium hydroxide, you form a uh, hydrogen sulfate instead. Um, but that's about it. You've got to know the reactions. That's really, really important. Make sure you know, especially this one, uh, quite a popular one, this aluminium one, mainly because of the, the slight difference in the product. But um, hope that helps. Bye.